on Facebook, apparently, in a few seconds. But yeah, wow, 106 attendees already in Zoom. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Kerry and I are going to be getting going in just a second. Okay, and I think we are live on Facebook. So hello everybody and welcome to today's live webinar. Um, my name is Amanda, I'm Deputy Editor of Professional Beauty and today I'm joined by the lovely Kerry Beavis. Now I'm sure some of you probably already know who she is, um, but she's the owner of home-based salon The Revive Co. Um, she won Professional Beauty's Therapist of the Year Award in 2016 um, and she is also the founder of a members club called the Affluent Solo Therapist Club um, and basically Kerry knows everything that needs to be known about how to build a successful mobile or home-based beauty business. Um, you know so many people want to be their own boss and so it's great to learn from somebody who's done it how to do it and to do it well. So today she's going to be talking a little bit about how to start from scratch the biggest challenges of going solo and then she's also going to touch a little bit on how to make sure your mobile or your home business survives and thrives when you reopen after COVID-19 lockdown which I know a lot of you guys want to know about so hi Kerry thank you for joining us today um, so just before I let Kerry take over I just want you guys to know if you do have any questions for Kerry as we go along please just put it in the chat box and I will make sure to ask her some questions at the end we'll have about 15, 20 minutes at the end to answer some questions. Um, but Kerry, I'm gonna mute my mic and I will let you take it away. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello everybody, hello. Right, I'm just, now it's my turn to, well actually you didn't look gormless, but I'm gonna look gormless as I share my screen. <laughs> and so I've got some nice slides, so you're able to sort of take some notes, take some screenshots as well, if that helps. Um, please do of any of the slides. So bear with me and here we go, we're in. So welcome um, to this afternoon's webinar with myself. So this afternoon, we're gonna be talking about the five steps um, on how to create a successful mobile or home therapy business. So like I say, I've been doing this for a very long time. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about me in a minute. Um, so I want to kind of teach you all the mistakes I've made so you don't do them. So it's a bit easier to have a success without all the, the slip ups. So that's what the point of this afternoon is all about, she says. So who am I? Here I am. Um, so I have a successful home salon called The Revive Company. It's from home, up in a bedroom. I've just converted a little spare room. And from that, I've had really successful fl flourishing business that I just love. And I've always wanted to work for myself. It's taken a while to get to that stage. Um, so I know all the pros and cons from working for yourself. Um, like um, Amanda said, um, in 2016, I won um, Professional Beauty Therapist of the Year, which was on my vision board and was a goal of mine. I'm not even kidding for like, years and that year I visualized it I was like I'm gonna win this and I did so I was very happy um I've been a beauty therapist for over 15 years from working free cleaning the tops of nail varnish pots in high street salons hotel spas London spas gyms is where I actually met my husband um who is my personal trainer very cliche um I've been a college lecturer so I've taught level two three BTCT levels in private colleges and in big colleges um I prefer the private college, if I'm honest. Um, and I had numerous attempts over those years to set up my own beauty business. I've little, rented little nail desks to realize I don't really enjoy doing nails. I've attempted uh, renting rooms to not a lot of success because I just kept giving discounts all the time. So I've really failed forward in my career um, of finally getting a business that actually worked really well for me and made me a great income and allowed me to do some really great things um, and when I did start working for myself and it was a success I've done some like really random things I always and I tell other people kind of to just don't say no to like opportunities to position yourself so I've I was a London Fashion Week manicurist with Jessica hands on team if you use Jessica, anybody can do it. Um, I've been on the BBC radio, as you can see there, the one show, miming what I won the award for to Jack Whitehall, done a bit of speaking on stage. I'm not a speaker, but I just enjoy doing random things. Also Pilates instructor, um, and I'm a business success and empowerment coach to solo therapists, as well as having the membership which is like a monthly subscription to have access to me, to different bundles. So we work on mindset, 
spirituality, but also the business stuff to make you thrive and be affluent. Um, and also I am a mum to a three and a half year old. So you can imagine I'm, it's a balancing act. <laughs> um, but enough about me, that's it. So just so you get a vibe of my experience really. So what I want you to think about first of all, and please make notes, if it's something you haven't thought about is what actually is success to you? I mean, I know the webinar is how to have a successful business, but we're all gonna have different levels of what success is. And you may never have actually spent time and allowed time to sit there with a book, with a journal and actually go, what is success to me personally, not what everybody else is doing. And it is different to all of us. There's no right, there's no wrong. And like you can say here, you might want a mansion by the sea, life-changing income. You might wanna travel first class a few times a year, no mortgage, financial freedom. Just a calm life is success to you. You don't want to work fully, like full time. You want to be packed. There's no right. There's no wrong. Um, and it's I've got some other examples, as you can see there. But it's what you want to experience in your life. And take I can't ex explain enough, actually, to understand your why and what you want to get out of your life and your life experience is actually really fu a fundamental basics of running a business, because when you know your why, you're able to push past all the fear, all the self-doubt, because you think, I really want this stuff for myself, for my family. Um, and I'm just talking business success. I mean, obviously, we all want, you know, abundance of love, good health and wealth and all of that. But if you want to experience life, however you do, it's having a why big enough to push you past the other side of fear really important so make sure that you if you learn anything sit down and really think about that so my step number one and you might sort of go oh god you know i wanted business business but it, your mindset will determine whether you fly and it is your biggest asset because your mindset will stop you from pushing forward like i say from that other side of fear from it it's just so important and it's a skill in itself to master your mindset, your thoughts, how you speak about yourself. Um, and there's a really good quote that I love and it's whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. So if you are thinking my business is gonna fail, I'm no good, the clients have got no money, I can't sell, I can't market myself, I can't do Facebook Lives, I'm no good at this guess what? You were right. You can't do any of that because you're not going to push yourself. Whereas if you can kind of start to think, I want to do these amazing things. I want to do this. You are more likely to get there. And it's, it is a skill mastering your mindset, but I cannot stress enough. And it's, it takes years. And I think it's a forever evolving thing to master your mindset. Oops, sorry. Um, but listen, listen to how you speak, listen to your thoughts. Um, if I said to you, right, I want you all to go and do a Facebook Live tomorrow or go out, I mean, I know it's slightly difficult right now, um, go out and start to, when well, we can come out of lockdown, start to talk to people about your business and straight away you were like, I'm no good at that. I can't talk to people, I'm this, I'm that and this. Listen to how you think and listen to how you talk about money as well. What story do you have? that you believe about money, that it's hard to make money, that money grows on trees, money only happens to a certain amount of people, or are you, yeah, I can earn as much as I want. Um, and it's, I think with society, when our beauty industry thinking you're mobile and think, oh, you work from a bedroom, and you know, if ever your career advisor said, what are you gonna go into beauty for? Like, that's like a dud in job. We're told, I know I was at a very young age that it's a bit of a, you can't make any money. So if you've allowed that to be a, kind of a, a factor it's going to really stop you and you need to kind of like push through those limited beliefs so stop letting fear limit beliefs stop you from succeeding and it might be like we may not have cho a choice on life events that have happened to us and we can very much like for me for, for instance I was bullied when I was 11 okay quite not badly it affected me it was traumatic um, and it wasn't physical, but I allowed that 11 year old girl that did whatever she did to me and the things she said and the way she made me feel impact me and no word of a lie way into my late twenties, maybe even early thirties to stop me like doing certain things. So if someone has been suppressing you and family, friends, someone's feeding you their belief and things have happened to give you self doubt, 
we have we can't help what's happened but we do have a choice on how we respond to that event and kind of almost go I'm not allowing that to affect me and to stop me reaching my bigger why and that's why it's important to focus on your why and you've got to immerse yourself in learning how to master your mind and there's great things on YouTube there's books there's people that I listen to um loads of people and if you want some people let me know and I can give you some people that I like listening to, um, to help you. And you've got to listen to this stuff all the time. And this isn't about being happy, clappy, the world is amazing every day, but honoring those feelings when you do feel down, but it's trying to pick yourself up quicker when things are not going well and they're not going your way and you're in that level of panic and distress, okay? That's what we're trying to master. And you want to feel fear, which you're gonna feel, um, but you're going to work on getting to the other side of it. And don't be afraid of fear. You fail forward. Like if, you fa if you're fearful of failing, you try again. Like don't let it stop you. So think about your thoughts. Like, actually ask yourself, like write this down, take a screenshot. But what are your thoughts? Like your everyday thoughts. You think, God, I say that a lot about you as a person, your money, your clients, um, that you sort of, like I might kind of, you might even say, just saying things like, oh, my little business, my small business, and kind of poo-pooing what you do is actually kind of, you're putting out quite not the most abundant like vibes going on there, saying, oh, my, just my little business, just this. Um, and you want to be really proud that you've taken the step, you are growing a business, um, regardless whether you go mobile or you work in a bedroom, it's still a business and it can still be your version of success. But what do you say you're no good at? No good at accounts? Well, have a listen to what you are saying. And what do you say you are excellent at? And if you don't say you're good at anything, start to learn to say that you're actually good at anything. You can say you're good at stuff without having an ego and without coming across as a bit pompous and up, your, up yourself. Because from a client's perspective, I would rather go to a therapist that says, you know what, I've achieved all this stuff and I'm really proud to someone that I've got no idea what they do. And they're not saying I'm good at this or they're not sharing what they're in. Like, you might not want to say you're an expert if you feel like, oh, that's slightly icky. But it's, it's trying to get used to taking compliments and saying you're actually good at stuff. Like, what are you good at? And shouting about it in a way that can attract clients that you want into your business. So that's the first thing, mindset. So I'm looking forward to getting any questions. Step two is know your, let me just move that, uh, move your, uh, oh, sorry, know your ideal client and give your brand an identity. Um, and when I say your ideal client, you may have heard, you know, your client avatar, but really try to niche down who it is that you would just love within your business. Like who would you love to, what kind of person would you love to be packed full of? And don't be scared of thinking, oh, if I only say women that do this or do that, then I'm going to exclude everybody else. You won't, but having a sort of more of a, a wishy-washy message about who you market, market your business to, will have an impact because the, your, your marketing message will just filter out um, and get very wishy rather than being, do you know what, this is who I serve. And you wanna serve people that you feel aligned to, that you actually enjoy having in your business, in your home or going to their homes. Otherwise, it just zaps your enjoyment out of your business and it is your business your way. Um, so really study them, like almost like stalk them in a non-creepy way and actually write down, have a document of your ideal client. Like what are their spending habits? Where do they work? What do they do? Um, what are their likes? What are their dislikes? How old are they? What is their lifestyle like? And where do they hang out? And most importantly, what problem do you, do they have that you solve and whatever your therapy is, whether it's tanning, nails, facials, Reiki, whatever, there you've all you're trying to solve a particular problem. And it's not just someone wants nice nails, the confidence that someone will have from having nice nails and nice hands is like it's really empowering. You are able to give that to somebody. So when you understand who it is you're dealing with, 
you can start to then think about what kind of language they use because a, a 20 year old girl is gonna be completely different to a 60 year old woman. Their spending habits are gonna be different. Their occupations are gonna be different. Their income, if absolutely everything. Some like um, when you think of maybe 20, 30, 40s mums, they are not going to have the same problems as a, a 20 year old. It's all gonna be different. And I'm not saying you can't get 60 year old women and 20 year old women into your business, but trying to just think, right, who is it that I want? What kind of person, even if it's not like an age thing, they will be more attracted to your Facebook posts, your Instagram, and the way your language is, is gonna be very much different to attract that different type of person. And then the word of mouth will happen. People will come into your business anyway, because you're showing who you are and your, you know, your brand, if you like. Um, but it's really, really important you know who your ideal client is. And list, take time to think of all the problems that that ideal client will have, how that problem will make them feel, and what, how do you solve it? And how will they feel after they've been to you? So how do you make people feel? Like, how do you transform people from feeling really horrible and, you know, whatever their, their issue is, to feeling like a new woman or new man? Don't forget to make your, you unique. You'll hear the word, you know, USP, what's your USP? Um, it's actually, the main thing is you. You are your USP for want of a better word, but being, um, you are your brand. If you was to search on Facebook, beauty therapists, I can guarantee there's thousands, there's thousands of us. We're like ants, They're, we're everywhere, but you are what's different. So you need to be showing up and showing up with your face when you knock on someone's door to go into their house, I mean, granted you'll have a face mask on right now, but people might be actually, we get scared about who we're going to allow into our home, whose house we're going to, but we forget that actually we can be quite a scary industry if someone's not quite sort of used to this. And just being able to know who you are and getting to know what you look like. You don't go around there with a paper bag on your head. You do show up as you do on camera, um, you, it's knowing your personality, what your passion is, showing your passion online is really, really important and showing it in marketing or whatever you're going to do to share your business, but you are your brand. And it might be a fear that you're gonna to have to get over or try and work to get over as much as possible, starting with a picture of yourself like if you was to look at all of your business stuff, is there a picture of you on there? Because put yourself in their position. Would you prefer to go to a therapist who says who they are? You can see their happy, smiley face. It tells me, it shows me how passionate they are. Or somebody that just says the beauty room, I do reflexology facials and stuff. It's not stand out enough. And that's what you need to portray your passion and your expertise through you. Like it's, it's quite simple, <laughs> but I know it's scary. Um, number three, don't undersell yourself and learn how to do business. I see lots and lots of therapists throughout when I used to teach like full time, people would, um, people seem to think that if you are mobile or if you work from home, that you still can't charge premium amounts. Yes, we don't have the overheads, but what I like to think of rather than like, oh, are mobile so I've got to be cheaper how many other industries would if you had a personal chef go to your house they would charge an extortionate amount of money wouldn't they they wouldn't just be like oh because I'm coming to you I'm going to be cheaper unless like they drop it off at the door and run off like they do now so don't don't start listen to how you talk about your business and start to really think that you are offering a premium service going to people's homes because it stops them going out they'd have to go out the house it's don't just don't undersell yourself don't discount like don't keep thinking I don't want to keep saying don't 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 but have a be mindful that you that you aren't cheap as chips because when you're as cheap as chips as David Dickerson says you then attract cheap for chips clients unless that is what you want to go for unless you want to be really accessible to people that maybe couldn't necessarily have full treatments then it's going to be slightly different for you but you need to know 
your costings. Like if you've never taken the time to work out how much um, a facial is and how much your waxing is, you need to know this stuff to know how much to charge, especially um, now we're having to add PPP in. I'm gonna go over that in later, knowing the cost of this stuff. Um, set yourself actual income targets. So you know what you want to get out of life. How much is that all gonna cost you? So you kind of work backwards. I wanna make this much money. I only wanna work this amount of days. So how much am I, can, do I need to be earning an hour? How much retail do I need to sell in order to hit those targets? And when you set targets, they wanna be believable. They wanna be achievable. Because if you kind of go, I'm gonna make, I don't know, uh, 200 grand this year and you haven't got one client, that target will scare the living daylights out of you that you probably just be like, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm not gonna even attempt it. So set realistic targets like you would if you worked in a salon if you've ever worked in salons they have targets so should you working for yourself um and know your profits how much you're actually making from your treatments per minute if you can um and you'll then work out how much you should be charging know how much you want to earn and think like a business like you don't want this unless you want it to be a hobby and it's a little bit of extra cash which is totally fine but if you're kind of like this is my livelihood this is going to enable me to travel, to be, to have a more, to uh, buy a house, whatever. Put my kids through school. Um, you need to be thinking in terms of business. And one thing I do see a lot is um, the therapist will kind of rather than they will have a panic. So I, I know I've done this in the past. You've been doing treatments, and you're like, oh, it's not working. It's things aren't selling. Things aren't selling. This isn't popular. That isn't popular. I know. I will invest, I'll learn a new treatment, let's do lashes. I don't really even like doing lashes, but I know five other people around my, where I live are doing lashes, I need to get on the bandwagon. But the trouble with that is, you've started a new treatment, but you still haven't learned the fundamentals of selling it and marketing it. So you're still gonna be back from square one, but minus a ton of cash from investing into treatments. So I'm not saying don't invest in treatments, but if you've got quite a, you know, I mean, some people just make money from facials or just massage or just nails. You don't need tons and tons of treatments if just as you start off or, you know, you've got to go with what you want to do. But actually use that money to invest in learning business skills is is paramount. You've, it's a skill. It is a skill. Like we went to college or did your course to learn waxing or whatever. It's another skill to learn business. And you've got so many hats that you've got to wear um, that it's it will take a while to learn all this stuff, but start somewhere. And don't think because you're a one woman band, you cannot charge your worth. Don't think that people won't pay it. Clients are cheap. No one will pay that much because they will. If you know where to market and you know your ideal client and you know where they hang out, that's gonna help you be able to charge your worth and find clients that are happy to charge to pay what you charge um, and stop going into panic mo mode and discounting. I have done it myself when I um, had a little treatment room in a gym. Oh, I, I rented this gym more from, it was just, I needed to work for myself. I was just like, yeah, let's do it. I went with my heart rather than my head, which was a big no, no. Um, and all we did all the time was blooming discounts to get people in. And the trouble there lies that then clients would say to me, oh, I'm going to wait until you do another offer or you do another discount and then I'll book in. And I was like, oh, okay. So I learned quite quickly not to do that because people will just wait. If you're constantly making it a habit to discount, people will expect it and they will wait. Why should they charge full price, pay full price if you are constantly dillying out discounts? I'm not saying don't ever do them. I think the best time to do discounts is if you're trying to build your business up, then you might want an incentive for um, new clients. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Um, and you might, I mean, some people might listen to go, no, don't do discounts at all. You've got to go what feels right with you. When you're launching maybe a new treatment and a new product, um, then it might be worth doing it, but you wouldn't make this like a regular thing. When I opened my uh, home business, I used to give 25% uh, off their first um, 
booking and then was like Oof, too much first you can get 25 percent of your most expensive booking because people would be booking loads of stuff at, at once um so you can change it nothing's set in stone and then when i was full i was like you know what i'm gonna stop that now because i don't need to do it i'm packed people are rebooking i don't need to keep giving people 20 percent or 25 percent off you may think that's too much you've got to work it out on your costings as to what you can afford that you're still making some sort of profit otherwise kind of what's the point you might as well go and work in the supermarket um and it is nice for an incentive you might want to every now and then but it's more about adding value to things is the more important thing so if people bought a block of treatments rather than going oh you get slash 50 percent off then maybe added value was products on the top of that um or like if you were doing like a, you could do like a one-to-one -one support via Zoom, give them actual like individual care, write an ebook. So you buy this, have this ebook, it tells you everything you need to do, have a video series, anything digital, maybe extra support, have an extra, they book in, they buy a bulk of, I don't know, um, nows, and then you get an Indian head massage while you have masks on. Try to think of things you can incorporate that don't take a lot of extra time nor money to add value, make it sound really enticing rather than just discount, 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 discount. Okay, so that is what, um, let me just move. Um, step four, have a retail range because it will really help increase your profits. Um, and even if you think I've got no idea what to sell, every treatment will have some form of retail. Don't go and get magpie syndrome and buy everything you think oh that might work ask people um but what you might also want to do like say for massage if you think well i just buy oils from like you know the wholesalers and essential oils how am i supposed to do that but you've got things like body brushes body brushes sell so well like every client could have a body body brush they don't cost you a lot of money they're not a lot of money um massage balls even you know like the blue spiky ones they're great to add into a um, massage for sheet face mask, if you just if you buy your products from like Sally's or wherever, buy some sheet masks to retail. Um, fake tan. I've got like coaching clients that are, that are making still even now like a couple of hundred pounds from tanning from different brands. Um, it, it, please just try to think because when you think of retail, it may scare you. You might think I don't want to sell. I'm not a salesperson. But it is an integral part of your service because they've had this wonderful treatment and then you're allowing them to go home with nothing to use to continue the effects of the treatment. So, you know, for facials, for example, the skin will feel great, but you know, really within, for what is it, like a week, two weeks, their skin, if they're still using the same stuff, they'll come back to you in a month, it's going to be in that same place. So they need this stuff to continue the results. Um, so it's, it's almost a disservice not being not retailing anything and you're not kind of flogging them stuff they don't need it's because they've got a problem you got the solution and it's retail plus it makes you more income some people make an extra 50 percent on retail alone don't have a room full of stock but you really can um make make money from retail and it's an it's a it's part of the service part of the customer journey to offer things for them to use at home. I really do, um, I do believe that. But practice makes perfect. So I don't know how many of you like hate sales and just think of it as like evil and pushy salesperson products on a tray, here, try this, try it on the back of your hand and then no one wants it. It's a skill, it really is a business skill. You've got to practice, keep practicing. Even I would say, go as far as writing a script, excuse me. So get rather, you know, you've got your consultation form, practice, like practice in your consultation, planting the seed that at the end of your treatment, if they are, if they're happy with their permission, can, you know, we'll, we will talk about then, if you've got this issue, mirror back to them what they've said, then at the end of your permission, we'll, we'll talk through what I think a plan to make you feel, and you've asked them how they want to feel, in the future if they look after their skin then we can get a plan together so you do feel like that about your skin about your body about your nails hair i don't know whatever it is 
So you're planting the seed and then you want to write a script and you're not going to like sit there and read this script like a robot, but it enables you to think of how, what sort of questions you're going to ask, how you're going to deliver and say things and evaluate, self-evaluate after every client to say, okay, oh, I really, I really cropped up there. What could I have said? What should I have said differently? Why did that maybe not, why did I not sell that thing when I know they could have sold that thing? Um, and while you're doing the treatment, think, and we're not, I'm not talking about flogging things inauthentically because that's rubbish, but we all know if you love what you're, the products you are using, I guarantee you're using them at home. So why aren't you telling your clients to use them at home? Otherwise you'll be using them. So you need to, to share this and get passionate about what you use. If you don't like your products, maybe now's a good time to start researching something you, that you do love. Um, it's a disservice not to arrange products that will solve your problems. They've come to you, trusted you. So you need to deliver on that. And it's just changing that mindset with, with sales. Um, and never assume people won't buy. It's your assumption that you are putting onto that person. If they said they want help, they want to know the plan at the end. And I don't know, I mean, I know I've done this at the end. You think you tally it all up, and you think, oh my God, that's like, that's like a few hundred quid. And you think, oh no, I've got to ask. I feel like I should take some money off, but no, I'm going to do it. And you get that kind of dread thinking they're going to say, oh, I don't want that. But that's your fear. It's not them. They've said, yeah, help me. Yes, I want this thing. Yep, perfect. Here's the money. Like it's it's really trying to get over that barrier and not thinking, well, they won't definitely get that. You don't know. Um, and so many people that I I go and have like um I become a bit of a what's the word, like a secret shopper on my own terms. No one asked me to do it, but I like to see and I hate, I hate going somewhere and no one gives me all they tell me to do is drink water. And no one's telling me how I can help myself or giving me a thorough consultation enough and saying, right, what's your issue? Um, because you are missing a trick. You really are. And I've been prepared to pay. Um, I went to some sa one salon. I wanted some Declio stuff. She just said, oh, here's some samples. She didn't tell me how to use them if they're actually good for my skin. So I didn't buy from her and I went online because I thought, well, why should I give you my money? You've made no effort. So I, I went and bought them online. I felt really bad, but I was like, why you haven't given me a full service so something to think about um step five i probably i get a bit excited i'm talking too fast and i am <laughs> um step five show up for your community around you where you live to stand apart you need from everybody else in your area you need to be showing up and um kind of like leading by example and position yourself as an authority within the industry in your area and that might not sit that great with you but if you're kind of not sort of practicing what you preach showing up and giving value then you again you're really doing yourself a like a dis you're giving yourself a disservice like you've taken the risk of starting your business then you're kind of like not being kind to yourself to push yourself out there and tell yourself you're no good at it. So be kind. Um, obviously, word of mouth is king. You can't beat word of mouth. Um, but remember, people are more likely to say about services that were crappy than that were good. It does take longer for the word of mouth. Um, but, you know, it is it's really, it's one of the best things. And some people have built their business up completely from word of mouth especially when like social media wasn't as big like when I first started even with this room it's not like how it was now at all like, I had to get out and graft in the like not actually in the streets but and it you can't still beat it um social media obviously I imagine you've probably all got some kind of social media account um one thing and I just did a three-day masterclass series on this last week so you may or may not have seen it Main thing is you'll be, you are consistent, but don't fall into the trap of just thinking that social media is your only marketing strategy because the way the old algorithms work, yes, you need a presence on social media and you need to be present on it, but don't let that be your only strategy. You need to be actually doing other things as well. And you need to be social on it, just hiding behind your business page and doing a post with no face, not saying who you are, not showing any part of you, why you got into therapy, absolutely anything, just saying, oh, I do reflexology, I do nails, here's a before and here's an after, which is important, 
but shouldn't be just solely that unless you've got a huge following then you're lucky um but you need to stand out and interact because it's social media like you've got to be social talk to other businesses on social media interact with people that like your posts message people that like your posts start a conversation like you would in the street like somebody would come into your shop and go have you got a price list um you go yeah here we are that's what they're kind of doing on your social media they're going in going oh I'm having a nosy so you need to I know you can't reach out to every follower but you need to start conversations people that comment be social on it not just quickly putting a, a post of another set of nows to showcase what you do why you're different um connect with local businesses people that can work that you can work with to share your knowledge to their audience is really powerful um I know obviously at the minute we're not able to get out but social media is really is really big at the minute online is really big so if you can muster the courage and this might take a while to do that but connecting with local businesses doing some marketing with them um, giving them vouchers for their most loyal customers and just get them to give them out so they can come to you um, literally like five or ten don't go crazy to social media takeovers get connecting with people where, you're, where your ideal client hangs out, get connected with these people because you can cross-reference and help each other. Again, this is why you need to know who your ideal client is, where they actually hang out in your area, what shops, um, what cafes, what gyms, um, what art places, I don't know, anything. What local groups can you go to when we can and give talks and seminars um, and be everywhere. You've got to really commit to showing up People need to see your business seven to 11 times before they can actually commit. Um, <clears throat> and just doing like one Facebook post every week, unfortunately, plus Facebook will be like, they're not putting any effort on why should we push that forward? But if you're not getting in all the different places, even good old fashioned notice boards, don't knock them. I mean, I know like they probably won't pull in a, a mass of clients, but just say, look, I'm in your local area. This is what I do. Nice, really good on brand um, poster that you can design in Canva. People will just see it. Then they'll see you somewhere else. Then you'll see, then they'll see you in the local cafe. Then you're going to be doing something somewhere else. It's just keep showing up and committing. Main thing, even on your social media, rather than keep trying to sell, is give value, give value, give value in different ways to your community and it might be especially while you're building it will probably be for free um it's what you have to do to get yourself out there but it positions you as also as an authoritative figure in this industry in your community workshops articles webinars masterclasses you name it you can do it um even if it's just small groups if you think i'm not doing blooming talk in front of like 10 people i don't like talking in front of people start slowly do it in front of a couple like you don't have to fill out pack out a room but it's just something to think about um and also what you need to start thinking about is building an email list um, you can use mailchimp completely free um to start building that audience and start keeping in contact with them some of you may use it already um but rather than just text and it's not just like promotion promotion but just an email and you own their leads it's a good way to get new people into your business as i was saying to on a coaching call earlier actually you would get their email address in return for something so not just oh join my newsletter it's great you get like keep up to date with what i'm doing they may find that a bit boring but they actually want something like a a workbook a worksheet a little pdf of something um a voucher i don't know be creative whatever you want don't want to lose money though do something that's free within reason um so yeah build an email list so you have those contacts because if social media was to disappear tomorrow you don't know who anybody is you don't own their details unless they've come to you with a consultation card um so it's very very difficult that way so build an email list and don't forget you can do this you just need to get out of your own way and start to get comfortable with actually being uncomfortable because the only way you're going to grow your business and trust me i know i say oh, i've done this and been talking and done that 
Um, I even just a few years ago when I had my son, I couldn't even go into Sainsbury's without having a panic attack. Um, so I I know, and the thought of going live and doing videos was horrendous. I didn't want to do it, but I've got comfortable with being uncomfortable. Before I come on here, my heart rate was going. I've got crystals and essential oils burning to chill me out. Last week I did like six hours of these things, but I'm still I still get nervous and think, oh god, <laughs> what have I suggest to? Um, but it's just um, you've just got to do it to get yourself out there. And it will have such an impact on your business, I promise. Um, oh, gosh. So lastly, what I just wanted to cover um, was just some, um, I mean, as we know, I haven't really touched on it because it's everywhere, isn't it? But how to survive under these new restrictions in our current climate. Um, obviously, as it's very grey with guidelines, but I just wanted to give you some kind of like idea um, of the sort of things that you can do within your business now. And even the things I've talked about earlier are things that you can start to do, like building an email list, starting getting good with online stuff. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But um, first things, just a little bit of, I mean, I am no expert on this at all, but I want to just sort of share the things. If you haven't done, you know, there's some free courses going around, some that are 20 quid. Um, but if you're kind of new to all of this anyway, you might just think, oh my gosh, I've got no idea. But things to help get you prepared for when we go back, along with all that I've talked about, is making sure that you're actually right, risk assessing your environment from the moment you almost like if you're mobile, the moment before you leave your house into the car and out, you want to have almost like a, a list of all the risks and how you are gonna deal with every risk. And when people come into your home, it's really important you start to risk assess. Um, maybe for ins insurance purposes, you need to check with them, but you can cut, you can get like guides and um, templates online, but you need to be risking a risk assessing how you do all of your treatments and how you just carry out your day to day. Um, set your guidelines and procedures for your clients. Now, I know nothing's been set in stone, so you might not want to send these out yet, but at least you could maybe start. We know things like if you work from home, you've got to clean the sink and the toilet if it's ever used between clients, things like this. Um, I'll go in a little bit, like, oh no, I'll talk a little bit later, it's another slide. I'll go, I don't want to like, um, go over the stuff but communicate with your clients like don't leave them in the dark because they will feel more confident with you um, and one of the main things is don't feel pressured I know we've got this date banging around of the 4th of July we hope that's happened you know that does happen but if you don't feel ready yet don't feel pressured to return me personally like I say I work from home upstairs I've got a three and a half year old that literally rubs his face on the carpet most days so for me, I probably won't be going back until maybe he's just starting school in September. So it's just, I've got a dad that's got Parkinson's. It's just not worth the risk to my family to have people into my home. That's how I feel at this precise moment. I might change my mind in a, in a month. So don't feel pressured. I know obviously we need to make money. I don't know financially. I just think, but it's, you know, this is just my, my take of it. I'd also advise at the minute, again, this is just advice, hold fire on buying any PPP just yet until guidelines are finalists, uh, finalists finalised, because we don't really know what we want. You don't want to waste money, like money's tight. There's all the things about the, the now screens. I've seen so many people say don't get them, other people say get them. And if we can get some kind of definitive guideline, that would be fabulous. I, I know people are working on it. And don't forget to factor in the costs of this stuff into your treatments as well. Um, the extra time and also the, the prices. So start researching, but you might not want to go out and go mad and buy loads of stuff. Um, avoid hearsay articles. Just look for the known facts, the government, the World Health Organization. You've got BabTac, the British Beauty Council, the Guild, the NHBF. They're all working together to try and get us some kind of definitive guidelines. Um, it's, I mean, like I say, it's a grey area and I can't say you must do this and must do that. But do your research before investing in any equipment and use your training practices and really common sense. Um, I've just got a list there of things that you can screenshot to just think about because all of this 
um, it will have an impact on how you do business and how much longer you're going to need between clients um, and things to think about, like cleaning products between clients' houses. Where are you going to do it? In the car? Are you going to come home and clean them? Are you going to do them in their house? Well, you know, probably not in their house. But where is all this going to be cleaned from each person? Separate door, dirty laundry, clean laundry, soft furnishes in your treatment room, like don't have them. Cleaning equipment before each quick client, factoring that time. Are you going to serve drinks? Probably Again, there's mixed response. Some people are like, well, why wouldn't I? But if cafes and things aren't open, you've got to think people are touching the glasses. You've got to then put them in your dishwasher. Like it's just contamination. Do you need to do it? Maybe they bring their own. Um, payment method, again, just to reduce contamination. If someone gives you coins, you put it in a, it's on metal. You put it in a box full of other coins. You give it to somebody else. It's just things, common sense really. Um, Someone said the other day that they, they're going to keep all of their mobile clients for one day. And this is if you mix and match, really. And then maybe all their home clients or their rental room clients on another day, rather than moving from place to place. Think about the cleaning of your car, um, clients' belongings in your home. Is it just don't bring anything in? Thinking, learn how to remove your PPE, not just like flinging your gloves off. It's just having all of these procedures in place um, footwear in your home and their home before this started I would get my clients to bring clean socks so I was like you might have been walking it all around your house and then you're bringing it into mine like I say I have a child that wipes their face on the floor <laughs> most times a day numerous times a day um, cleaning the sink paper towels and start to research how you're best going to sterilize um, and disinfect because there's various things autoclaves are expensive um, obviously you've got your LED units um, You've got a UV cabinet to then store your sterilised tools and then you've got disinfectant, which obviously doesn't kill everything. So getting very familiar with what you are going to use. Um, sorry if I went, I didn't go too quick, you had time to screenshot. So how to actually make money during this time as well. And things, things to start to think about with the impact of what's going on. Um, and you can start doing this now, but these are things you could do Forever, I think, um, online consultations via Zoom, like what we're doing now, you can screen, like not, um, like screen new clients to make sure that you know they're safe, but you can do consultations, you can start selling products now. I know people that are still selling treatments and even like products mainly by doing online consultations, start doing online workshops, your webinars, start to create digital products, eBooks, workbooks, cheat sheets, anything that can add value, a video series. And all these things could be charged, you can do them free, um, but it's giving value. Um, and it's, you could, I suppose it's, you're not in as much contact with clients. You could do a thorough consultation via Zoom before they come to you and then they come in or you go to them and do all the things. You're spending less time with them. Um, group tutorials, get, get a group of people, women together or their uh, clients to buy like self-care packages and then teach them how to use them in a group. You've got a wider audience, you've made some money, you've added value, um, have a Facebook group to hold accountability with challenges in it. It's just thinking in different ways within your business, um, but it start thinking about how you can give value, how you can educate and still make an income online, even when it all goes back to hopefully one day normal and we haven't got to do all of this, um, that hopefully that will, that will happen. So lastly, I'll, I know I've been talking a long time. <laughs> um, if you do want to connect with me, um, I do have a Facebook group for solo therapists and it's called the Revive Code Pro, um, basically because my room's called the Revive Company. So go and check that out. Um, I do lives in there every week. Um, it's just a really nice supportive group. That's where I do my webinars and masterclasses. Um, and then you can also contact me via Instagram, a um, bit long winded, I am going to change that at some point, but it's KB underscore the underscore beauty underscore expert. Um, so it's all there and you can D DM me Kerry Beavis on Facebook. And yeah, if you want to know more, then please do and get in touch. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, lots of information overload, I'm sure. <laughs> but yes, thank you. Over to you, Amanda. <laughs> Kerry, thank you for that. That was so informative. I mean, the chats have just 
been showering you with love and I think um there were so many things that you said in there that resonated and I didn't want to jump in and stop you at any time because um I think people are getting such good information we've got about nine minutes to cover some questions so I'm just gonna throw out a couple from Facebook and from the Zoom account um the first one is from Kelly Travers on Facebook and she said can you start up a beauty business from home just doing facials rather than all the kind of maintenance treatments, which are like nails, lashes, that kind of thing? Can yes. it be done? 100%. Yeah, now, I mean, I... Oh, Sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can just be a facialist, 100%. That is your area of expertise. Don't feel pressured to having to add nails. And it's nice you know like people then won't have to go elsewhere for other things but if you are creating what I would call transformational packages and really helping people in their skin you don't need to do other things definitely not definitely go for it um and Melissa on zoom has asked how easy is it to work out costings where bottles of products are used and you only use a few pumps of each item is there a basic calculation yeah, so what you can, you can actually ask the supplier because a lot of the suppliers actually know how much it is to do a treatment. That would be my first port of call, ask them, because they would have worked it out. But even if you can, say, um, measure out roughly how many pumps, how, like, sort of pump what you would use cleanser-wise, and if you've got, like, a little millimetre container, see how many mils that is, and then just divide it by the amount of mils in the pot, you get a rough idea of how much is it's rough if you're going to do it like mm. that scientific um you don't want to waste a whole thing of it squirting it out just to see how much yeah. but do that um i would do cool um and we had another question on facebook which was from vicky and she asked whether you've got any tips for home-based therapists who are preparing to enter some industry awards to raise their profile oh okay so what i one thing i did when i entered the professional beauty one even before I entered it I actually got into the mindset of how can I be the best and I really stood by that like I want to exceed all expectations and I and like with anything in life is I imagined what I would be like being kind of the you've got to have some self-belief so what would my services be like what would my consultation my client journey be like and everything in I made it as top notch as I could um, and over delivered on everything added value where I could um, and it's also really like knowing especially with the pro beauty awards for your community like what do you do to lead by example not just so I sit in my treatment room and don't get out there how do you help your community is really important um, so that made me think like okay what do I do and I wrote for like a local like magazine that goes through the doors I did the workshops I wrote certain courses to help people, um, just how you can show up really and be one of the, you know, a, a good therapist, not just in your treatment room, but as a whole to help the beauty industry, I think, and write blogs, guest blogs, just to get yourself out there and add your, your knowledge, because you have got knowledge, it's just that self-belief. <laughs> I hope that yeah. helps. <laughs> no that's some great tips especially some great tips if you're doing a professional beauty awards entry all yeah. that stuff about the community and wider things yeah. and that always goes down really well with the judges um claire on zoom has asked whether you've got any examples of excel templates or pivot tables for working out costs she says she's a mobile nail tech and her mind always explodes when she's trying to work out her costs thoroughly i mean i i just use i haven't got any template I don't think I have um oh, I suppose I'm just trying to think of, of, of time in my head really what I would do is you just want the treatment best thing is to do to go to your suppliers because they will literally have a spreadsheet of it um of how much it costs so you want to know how much all of the products cost within a treatment mm. how long it takes you um and then work out obviously like how much that is costing you in in treatment in, in kind of like product cost and then how much you're charging what is the difference basically between what it's costing you and how much profit you're making and if you think actually i'm not making enough then you can just just tweak it like and make sure you're increasing your prices at least at least every two years if you haven't done a price increase 
do it. Um, does that kind of make sense? Make it simple, mm. like the costing, how much you're charging and how much you actually would like to make and just tweak accordingly. You can't you know, increase your costs, I don't think, by a great amount all of a sudden if you're not going to do anything different so much. Mm. A gradual thing. Um, but I don't have actually any um, templates ask your suppliers because they will have a breakdown the majority yeah it's all about charging what you're worth isn't it yeah. um we got another question from another vicky this one's on zoom and she said are there any websites resources or providers you would recommend to learn the business skills that you've been speaking about and are there any specific business skills that mobile and home based therapists should be looking to work on at the moment yeah so um I, I follow like a lot of um, like women businesses as well. So it's, and I'll tell you what's a really good one. Um, if you've ever heard of Pete Scott, he does sales. He, he used to do more stuff in the beauty industry and he still kind of does, um, but he's very good at sales. Um, there are lots of kind of female entrepreneur groups on Facebook that are really supportive, that are really, really good. Um, and I learn a lot through kind of like webinars like this, social media, there's loads of like free courses, but also I learned a lot from coaches. Like I've invested in business coaches as well. You can't beat it really having that one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. um, getting in touch even with like the local council, they do lots of various tax things to help you learn about your taxes. Um, and if you can afford it, get an accountant, if you're no good at money, like not being, I tell you not to be good at money, but if it's not your thing, you don't enjoy it. If you can outsource, then do. Um, it's just constantly like, just I read a lot about entrepreneurship, really, like Marie Forleo, um, money mindset, like Denise Duffield Thomas, I learn about. Um, I'm trying to think, and just very, various like sounds book, and now I'm on the spot, I can't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm going to try and squeeze in one more question just before we round it up. Yeah, this yeah. one comes from Maria and I think it's a really interesting question. It's about how do you work out how much to charge for um, tutorials and consultations with clients over Zoom? Okay, um, I mean what I used to do is it's really kind of like personal how much time you're going to allow um, as well but you might you might want to date like for a consultation I wouldn't do them for free because you get the time wasters personally. So I used to just start at like 15, 20 pounds for a consultation. And then, um, then they could redeem that on like products or a treatment if they rebooked. So you could do that. Um, it depends how much effort. It's really hard for me to say like a ballpoint figure to say charge 30 quid, but it depends what's going to go into it. If it's just going to be like a 15 minute, what do you use? Then you might want that to be free. But any more sort of than sort of half an hour, you definitely want to be charging like 15, 20 quid, even more really, I would say, depending on what they're going to get out of it. If yeah. That, does that help? Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much, Kerry. I'm really sorry, guys. We only have an hour for this webinar. I wish I could extend it and we could go on for ages because I know there's so much information. For everybody who's been asking in the comments, these slides will be available. We're going to be putting this webinar up on PV's YouTube channel tomorrow morning. So you can go back, you can watch it, you can take down notes um, and that will be there indefinitely. And it will be on our Facebook page as well. So you can just go in the videos and watch it again. Um, and yet, for somebody who's asking about Kerry's Facebook group, and um, the name's still on the slide at the moment, the Revive Co Pro FB group. So if you just note that down, um, that'd be great. But thank you so much, Kerry. There's been such an outpouring of love um, on Facebook and on Zoom for you. So it's been a great session, really yeah. informative and helpful. And we've really appreciated having you on. Thank you for asking. Uh, and I hope to see you at a PB show yeah. in the future. Yes. giving more education to people but um otherwise yes. thank you everybody who's attended thank you Kerry for hosting I hope oh. you're all safe and well and hopefully I'll see you on another webinar soon but otherwise have a lovely weekend everybody and you take care thank guys. you Kerry really appreciate it see you later everyone bye, bye.